Barbie was the highest grossing movie of 2023. In fact, it was unexpectedly the highest grossing movie in Warner Brothers history. But why? Was it just an incredible marketing strategy? Pure nostalgia? Or was it the memorable art direction, the tongue-in-cheek social commentary, or just a case of perfect casting? Although some viewers were abnormally enraged by the political critiques of a movie about crotchless dolls living in a plastic world, one thing the fans and haters tend to agree on is that Ryan Gosling's performance as Ken was the most fun and memorable part of the film. While Margot Robbie was undeniably a perfect fit for the role of Barbie, writers Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach made her character more inquisitive than comedic. So while she was on a more passive, existential journey, learning from different women's stories in the real world to become more human, Ken is more active, and once he experiences patriarchy, he's off to the races, and leans even deeper into his gender stereotype, which grants his character a lot more comedic opportunities, as long as they cast the right actor. For a large chunk of his career, I have dismissed Gosling as the love at first sight guy. As in so many of his movies, his characters would consistently experience the same cycle. He would lay eyes on his leading lady, just intuitively know he loved her, and then sacrifice anything to be with her. So casting him as Ken, someone who was destined to be madly in love with Barbie for no clear reason, made perfect sense to me, as long as he had the comedic chops to pull it off. You'd be forgiven for not realising it, but in recent years, Gosling has been slowly unveiling an unexpectedly strong comedic instinct. It started with Crazy Stupid Love, where he was mildly amusing, but it felt like that role could have been played by anyone who looked a certain way. But it was in Shane Black's The Nice Guys in 2016 that it became very clear that Ryan needs to be in more comedies, as his timing, delivery and physicality was all on point. Being funny is one of those things that's hard to quantify. You've either got it or you don't, and you won't really know if you do until it's on screen, landing or bombing with the audience. Watching Barbie in the theatre was a strange experience, as plenty of the jokes were falling flat, but every time Gosling was on screen, the audience seemed much more engaged and ready to laugh. But why? Did writer-director Greta Gerwig just write Ken as a funnier character, even giving him the only major musical number? Or is there more to it than that? There's only one way to find out. Let's take a deeper look at the more subtle details of Ryan Gosling's performance. In my view, there are three keys that make this performance work so well. Boyish insecurity, comedic contrast, and how Ryan externalizes Ken's internal battles. I'll start with the character's boyish insecurity. Sometimes in order to appreciate what one actor did, you have to imagine what lesser actors might have done instead. Most would probably have portrayed Ken as just an arrogant alpha male, or just an overly polite nice guy, or just a narcissistic pretty boy. But given Gerwig's script places Ken in a matriarchy, where he has no power and only feels joy when Barbie gives him attention, Gosling correctly identifies the time in most men's lives when they would behave in a similar way their early teens, and plays the character like that, as most male viewers can remember how embarrassing it used to be to have no idea how to make your crush notice you. This also just makes logical sense. If Ken isn't sexually functional and can never quite get the girl he likes to notice him, why not just play him like a perpetual, insecure teenager? Gosling achieves this by making Ken a validation-seeking machine. When we first see him, he's like an awkward kid nervously standing by himself, waiting to be noticed by the only person that matters to him, completely unaware of how transparently insecure he appears. Gosling communicates this insecurity by always having Ken vacantly looking outward, to other people's reactions like an excitable dog, as his ego only ever grows from other people's affirmation. So Ken's emotional state is always channeled through his eyes in some way. For instance, if he suspects he's going to be made look bad, it hurts his ego, which is all he has, so he shuts his eyes so that he's blocking out the source of the pain. Ken's not cool! He is to me. Oh, you're just gonna slow me down. Just look at this little ashamed look away as he drags his eyes back up to Barbie, like he's scraping his ego back up off the floor. This transparent insecurity is pathetically relatable, but not for a grown man. None of this makes sense for a mature adult, which is what makes it so entertaining to watch. 
When it comes to his primary source of validation, he maintains affectionate eye contact with her for as long as possible, like a boy that doesn't realise how obviously he's staring at his crush. This is clearly part of Gerwig's direction, as it's written into her script that Ken will stare into Barbie's eyes as he plays guitar at her for an uncomfortably long time. But there's a hilarious, obsessive sincerity to Gosling's gaze, like a young boy finally getting exactly what he wants, which is only topped off by how transparently he's trying to look cool and sexy with these seductive little eye squints. Everything Ken does is trying to look cool to someone else, even posing and flexing his muscles while he sings alone. But on top of playing Ken like an insecure teenage boy, Gosling also makes him just as moody and immature as one. We constantly see Ken pouting and stomping his feet when he doesn't get his way. This is why when Barbie wants to clear her mind and think, which involves taking her attention off Ken, we see his mood instantly sour, and he sulks like a bored child waiting for his mother in a department store. Who is playing with me? I hate it when people think, I get so bored. The faster I figure it out, the faster we get to go home. What am I supposed to do? Ken! And notice how Gosling conveys this childlike behaviour by using the public bench like a jungle gym. These are small details, but they all add up to not just generate a quick laugh, but a lasting impression of the character. This leads into the second key, comedic contrast. A silly performance is only funny to witness if we have someone in the room playing it straight that we can identify with. Whether it's Steve Carell in The Office or Will Ferrell in virtually anything, their outrageous behaviour is only funny because of how inappropriate and out of place it is. And it's only made inappropriate or out of place when we have someone next to them playing it straight. If everyone is silly, then no one is silly, and it's kind of tiresome to watch as the character isn't breaking any social rules. But put just one silly person in a room full of serious people, and the comedy writes itself. In this sense, Ryan and Margot play very well off one another, as Ryan is playing it silly and Margot is playing it straight. She highlights his absurdity by giving us a baseline of normality. But it's not just Margot, virtually every other actor in the movie is making Ken stand out like a sore thumb, and not just because of his costumes, but because of the little creative flourishes that Gosling implements. For instance, at the party in Barbie Land, Everyone else is smiling and happily dancing, whereas Ken is on the sidelines looking bitter, literally frowning in the most exaggerated, pouty way as he tries to fit in by joining the group. This moody, emoji-level expression is completely out of place in this overly choreographed happy dance sequence, and that's what earns the laugh. There's nothing funny about anyone else in this scene, as everything they're doing is consistent. But having Ken there to contrast their happiness with his misery, while still technically playing along despite his bitterness, stirs something in the viewer, so his silliness is being highlighted by everyone else's straight performance. Part of Barbie's success is undeniably in its art direction. You can freeze frame virtually any moment of the film, and the image pulls you in. But in the case of Ken, just notice how consistently he stands out as the silly one in basically every frame, despite taking himself very seriously. Like here, Ryan leans forward and waits for a kiss from his beloved Barbie, with his hands blocking his own crotch. There's something so PG and innocent about it all, as if it's straight out of a fairy tale. But it's contrasted by Margot just staring at him. He's literally hurling himself at her, so open, so vulnerable, and it's being met with painfully passive neutrality. The image alone is hilarious, and the longer it continues, the funnier it is. Yet again, Ryan is playing it silly, as no man would do this in real life, and Margot is playing it straight to highlight the absurdity of what he's doing. Even here, in a simple dialogue exchange, in which a teacher asks Ken for the time, Ken is trying to sneak away with stolen books about patriarchy. The teacher interrupts this process by asking a question, and Gosling's hand instantly protects the thing that matters most to him, his books. And he maintains this serious look on his face, as to him this is a high stakes situation, while the viewer can plainly see how low stakes it really is. So the humour stems from the contrast between how serious this feels to Ken versus how silly it really is. Then when he realises she respects him, 
He doesn't suppress his surprise or play it cool. He points his finger at her accusationally, as if he's caught her doing something wrong. All these big hand movements could be straight out of a cartoon, which fits right into the fake cartoonish world of Barbie Land. Now we come to the final key, externalizing an internal battle. A large theme throughout Greta Gerwig's Barbie is appearance versus reality. Barbie and Ken may look like Barbie and Ken, but that doesn't mean their lived experience is as flawless as their appearance. They experience conflicting emotions just like anyone else. But for Ken, due to his insecurity, he's always trying to put up a front. He wants to seem cool and admirable and attractive, no matter what. In the second half of the movie, when Ken brings the patriarchy back to Barbie Land, we get to witness the before and after contrast in his behaviour. Before, he would gaze longingly at the woman he loves, whereas now he limits his eye contact, trying to look away to seem more aloof and mysterious, to make the woman he wants more insecure. But we see how he really feels whenever Barbie isn't looking at him, as underneath he's still the same insecure guy he was before, he's just putting up a weak facade. But Ryan is particularly talented at sharing his character's true feelings despite how he's trying to appear. For example, when the other Ken threatens to beach him off, the two come face to face ready to battle. The other Ken's body language looks pretty relaxed and genuine, but we can sense that our Ken is trying and failing to appear tough and fearless as Ryan gives us insight into his character's underlying insecurity with this trembling exhale of breath as he steps forward. All right, Ken, you're on. Let's beat you off. When Ken wants to spend the night with Barbie, she rejects him because every night is girls' night. Now on the surface, Ken is smiling and agreeable, saying she's right as always, but is that really how he feels? Let's see how Ryan subtly communicates Ken's true feelings. Every night is girls' night. Mm -hmm. Every night. Forever. These little micro blinks that he's unleashing indicate a rage bubbling underneath, almost like grinding teeth. So Ken can say that he agrees with her, but Ryan is showing us the truth. And then when she leaves, the pulsating rage continues through his eyelids, which, if you try it yourself, is actually quite a difficult little movement to pull off. But Ryan is yet again finding a fun and interesting way to externalise his character's true feelings, even when he's lying. And as a final example, when Barbie is leaving to go to the real world, the other Ken is bullying our Ken again, by pointing out she's choosing to go without him. Ken then smugly lies, claiming that she did invite him, but he said he would rather stay here. Now, while he's comfortable telling his lie, notice that Ryan is holding his glass perfectly normally. But then once other Ken challenges him, asking if he's scared, check out how Ryan shares the truth with the audience. Are you scared? No. I, <laughs> I bet you're scared. And I bet she doesn't even want you to go. Starting with an exhaled breath on the word no, like a boy who's caught lying, suddenly there's this tornado of feelings spinning inside of him, represented by his frantic twirling of the glass. When the other Ken mocks him, saying she probably doesn't even want you to go, Ryan bloats his eyes in fear and physically tugs his upper body back, as if he's just taken a major blow to his ego. So whatever feelings are bubbling internally, Ryan finds a way to externally communicate them, using his whole body as an instrument. Without these little creative choices, these scenes and the performance could still work, but would undoubtedly feel much blander. The colossal triumph of Warner Brothers Barbie movie was pretty unprecedented, with so many factors contributing to its box office success. But without Ryan Gosling's cartoonishly insecure and boyish portrayal of Ken, it's hard to imagine how the movie would have been received. Whether it would have been quite as big, quite as quotable, or quite as memorable. His journey from dramatic lead, who's deeply in love with his co-star, to comedic lead, who's pathetically in love with his co-star, may not sound like as big a challenge on paper as it feels on screen. But with his unique physicality, his emotional transparency, and willingness to make a fool of himself, he proved that his natural comedic instincts were clearly more than enough, And the results were box office gold.
Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching. But if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing.